Hey, and thanks for watching. Today I'm going to show you how I use an IRR matrix, or otherwise known as an IRR grid, to assess the appropriate hold period for a real estate investment. So first to what is an IRR matrix and why is it important? Well, you know, when you, when you do your typical kind of just basic uh, real estate analysis, right, you model to uh, net operating income, you drop in year or period zero, your acquisition costs, for instance, and then you have some uh, residual or terminal value, right? And so in this case, let's imagine it's a 10 year hold. You buy it for 10 million. You have this cash flow stream throughout the hold period. And then in year 10, you sell it for a nice profit, 13.4 million above the 10 million that you paid for it, right? And so this is your unlevered cash flow stream that I just uh, discussed. And then you have some IRR. And so we do an I IRR calc, and we see that the 10-year hold is a 9.175% IRR. But here's the issue. Uh, you're considering purchasing this property, and perhaps you don't know how long you want to hold it. Uh, and so you're putting some strategy together. Maybe you're going to go out and raise some equity and you want to be able to tell your equity partners, hey, this is going to be a five-year hold or a seven-year hold or a 10-year hold. And so rather than doing it manually each year, what we do is we do an IRR matrix where uh, with one formula copied over and copied down, it uh, displays the cash flows for a one-year, a two-year, a three-year, a four-year hold and so forth. And then it calculates the IRR for each for each scenario, and you can come in and look and say, hey, if I if we held this for five years, it's an 8.92 percent unlevered IRR versus a 9.17 percent IRR in a 10-year hold, right? And and so then you can assess what's the appropriate hold period for this investment. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Uh, I have uh, included in the blog post connected to this video this workbook that I'm using and you can go ahead and download that and either follow along or uh, after the fact go in and try to do this yourself and so I have two tabs a complete tab where I have the, the actual formulas included and then I have an incomplete tab where I've still dropped all the cash flows in and, and this you would need a model depending on the type of property etc you need a model to these levels and then with these uh, levels you can go ahead and create your IRR matrix, both for unlevered IRR and for levered IRR. So here we have it. The First, the levels you need, you need to drop in cash flow for your acquisition cost. And in the, in the case of development, right, this isn't coming in year zero. It's coming over uh, uh, you know, maybe year one through year two for a certain number of months while you're in your development cycle. And those are your negative cash flows. And you have some loan funding. Again, in the case of an acquisition here, that's coming in time zero. So you're spending $10 million, but you're taking out a 75% LTV loan or $7.5 million, and that's an inflow in your cash flow stream. But if this were development, you would be taking uh, construction draws over some period uh, during your, your development. Then we would model our uh, net operating income. Uh, in, in the case of an acquisition, stabilized property, these are just stabilized uh, uh, operating cash flows. You'll notice in this cash flow stream, I did have a period here in, in year four and year five where uh, we lose uh, some tenants, um, take a shock to NOI, and so this drops for a period before continuing what I'm right now modeling as a 3%. Uh, annual growth over the initial years, 650000 in, in net operating income. Next, we drop in debt service, and, and we need this be a debt service on the $7.5 million uh, because we, we need to get to an after financing cash flow uh, figure. And this is simply a payment on 30-year uh, amortization, 4%. Again, this is you know, just, uh, uh, I'm just illustrating the concept here. But we need debt service. We need to then model to cash flow after financing. Again, being simplistic, I'm just taking net operating income, subtracting out debt service, and coming on up with a CFAF uh, figure. Then we also need the loan payoff. And we need to calculate that in each year. And so this formula here I'm using, there's a variety of formulas that you can use in Excel or functions in Excel to calculate the payoff. I just use the present value formula. Uh, but I'm calculating the payoff in each year. 
and so if we were to pay off the loan in year four, for instance, this would be the payoff on, on the initial loan balance of seven and a half. Then I need a property value, and, and to get that, I'm going to cap the following year's NOI by some cap rate that I feel is appropriate for that given year. And so in this case, again, being overly simplistic, I'm assuming the cap rate stays constant at six and a half percent. It's our going in cap rate. That's going to be our exit cap rate. And then I'm just, for each year, I'm taking the following year's NOI, I'm capping it at that year's cap rate to arrive at that property value. Now, again, you'll notice as we have these dips in NOI, for instance, in year four, uh, we get uh, a, a property value that drops fairly significantly, and that's kind of a, an unstabilized value, if you will. Um, you can also come in here. Uh, so anyway, you, you're going to model your property value uh, with some cap rate um, or whatever other method you want to calculate property value in any given year, but you'll need to have that property value for each year. And with that, you would then come down and build your matrix. Now, what I do is I then drop in an unlevered cash flow on the hold period that I prefer. And in this case, I'm assuming a 10-year hold, right? And so I start out this model assuming a 10-year hold. I model 10 years of cash flow plus an, uh, an NOI in year 11 so I can cap that for my year 10 value. And then I'm looking at the IRR on that hold period. So this is my 10-year hold, 9.17% uh, IRR unlevered, uh, an unlevered equity multiple of a little over two times. And I do a similar here. Uh, this formula is just calculating what's my levered cash flow. Uh, my levered IRR and my levered equity multiple on a 10-year hold. Then I say, you know, is, t is a 10-year hold the right hold? Well, I'm going to do this analysis. I'm going to build my IRR, IRR matrix. It's going to tell me that. So first, unlevered. What, what you see here is I'm first going to go and I'm going to drop in my different scenarios. A one-year hold, a two-year hold, a three-year hold, a four-year, and so forth, all the way to a 10-year hold, right? And uh, so these are my 10 scenarios. And then I drop, I put 0 through 10, because 10 is the number of years that we're calculating here. And year 0, of course, being uh, period 0 cash flow, year 1 and 2 and so forth. And we're going to then take an IRR, and that's going to be calculated in this cell, of whatever cash flows we drop in here. And the thinking is, in year 1, we're going to have a cash flow in time 0, a cash flow in year one when we exit the investment, and there'll be some IRR on those two years of cash flow. Year two, cash flow in year zero, cash flow in year one, cash flow in year two, which is our exit year, and so we'll do a, a IRR for those three periods, right? Uh, period zero plus the year one and two. On down through period 10. And the beauty of this is I can write one formula and then copy that formula over to the right, copy it down, and my unlevered IRR matrix is done. So here's the formula I use. So I'm going to do an if statement. If, open parentheses. If my period one, and then I'm going to lock in my column by hitting F4 three times. So I have a dollar sign before the A, but no dollar sign before the number or the row. And that what that does is that locks this column in. It makes the column absolute but the row relative. So the row will move up and down, but the column will stay, uh, will stay right there. And I'm going to say if, if that scenario, this number one, is greater than the year in which the cash flow is coming from, and I'm going to lock in the row, so I'm going to hit F4 two times, and that locks in dollar sign before the number. If that's the case, then what I want to do is add my acquisition cost in that period, right? And again, I'll lock in just the row with two F4s. Plus, I'm going to add in my, and again, this is unlevered, so I'm going to add in my net operating income, which in this case is period zero, there's nothing, and I'll lock in the row, two F4s. So that, again, the thinking is, this is before the exit year. Anything before the exit year, we're going to add up any acquisition cost we have in that year, plus any operating uh, income from that year, right? So there's no exit, so there's no sale. There's just the any outflows plus income. So that's the first one, comma. 
So that was an if, that was if it, if our statement was true. If the statement's false, we're going to do another if statement. So this would become a nested if statement. If the scenario year, again locking in the column, equals the year that we're in, the cash flow year we're in, locking in the row. If that's the case, right? So that's saying if we're in the exit year, well, what we want to sum up there is. Uh, acquisition cost again in the event that there were any outflows in that year, locking in the row, plus our operating cash flow from that year, op locking in that row, plus the property value, because that's what we're going to be selling it for in this final year. And we again lock in the row. That's if the scenario year is equal to the actual cash flow year. Finally, if that's not the case, what's happening is we're beyond the exit year or the, so the scenario year is beyond where we want it to be and we're just going to simply set this as two quotation marks. You can also set it as zero, but essentially zero, right? And then we hit enter. And then we're just going to take that formula, copy it to the right, take that same formula all the way here and copy it down. And now we have the cash flows for each of these scenarios. And with those cash flows, then we're just going to come into cell B25 or in the first scenario, and we're going to hit equals IRR, open parentheses. We're going to select everything from 0 out to 10, leave it uh, relative, so we're not locking in anything. And then we're just going to copy those down. We copy down the IRR, and now we have the unlevered IRR for each scenario year. And so while in a 10-year, in a it's a 9.17% IRR, we can see that, hey, if we exit in year six, it's still a 9% IRR. Uh, and is it really worth holding it for another five years for 17 basis points? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, our, and we could do the similar matrix, but with our equity multiple. And maybe the equity multiple uh, doesn't increase much either. It likely w wouldn't from year six to year 10. And we'd say it makes more sense for us to exit in year six. So that's that's the formula for the unlevered IRR matrix. For the levered, it's very similar, right? So what we're going to do is, again, we're going to make, if our scenario year, locking in the column, is greater than our cash flow year, locking in the row, then we are going to take the outflows, right? And in this case, that would be the acquisition cost locking in the row plus any loan funding right uh, because this is on a levered basis so that's going to offset some of those outflows so we're going to do that that's in this case c5 locking in the row plus any levered cash flows in this case i'm calling that cash flow after financing that's this locking in the row so that is if our scenario year is greater than our cash flow year if our scenario year, locking in the column, is equal to our cash flow year, locking in the row, then we are going to do the same here. So outflows plus any loan fundings from that period plus any operating cash flow, levered operating cash flow, locking in the row, plus the property value, right, what we would sell the property for in that year, plus what we would pay the loan off, right, or, or you know, the amount that we'd have to pay to, to pay off the loan, locking in that row. So that would be the case if our scenario year is equal to our cash flow year. Otherwise, comma, parentheses, or quotation marks, I apologize. And I, oh, that's because I forgot my if statement. Got an if statement in here, which you probably noticed as I was writing it. Okay, so there's my formula. Copy over. Copy down. And then just writing my IRR calculation, copying that down. And there we go. And in fact, on a levered basis, and this is where it gets it gets powerful. On an unlevered basis, you say, well, you know, maybe I do wait wait for a 10-year hold. On an unlevered basis, 
our year five IRR uh, on a levered basis is quite a bit higher than our tenure. And, and so that tells us, hey, this, this is an investment that makes more sense to hold for just five years. We get past uh, kind of this period where there's some rollover. And as soon as we, we stabilize this asset again, call it year five, end of year five, we sell. So that is the IRR matrix, uh, powerful tool when you're analyzing whole period. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me and uh, thanks for your time.